So to our last semi-final of the afternoon and it's men's doubles and we're going to be focusing on that bottom half of the draw. Seven different nations involved at quarter-final stage, two Japanese pairs as you can see, four different nations at semi-final stage but only two seeds. Siao Long and Chu Si Han, the number six seeds in the top half and in the bottom half of the draw, the number two seeds, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiwan. So, as far as the Danes, Mads Conrad Peterson and Mads Peter Colling, this their first ever Super Series semi-final for the Indonesians Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan well the world champions former world champions won the gold medal at the world championships in Guangzhou in 2013 the Indonesians Asian Games gold medalists of this year as well well, they've already been in nine Super Series tournament finals and won six of them. So when you look at those sort of statistics, I think the Indonesians overwhelming favourites. That said, I think the Danes this week have just grown in belief. I was going to say grown in stature, but quite frankly with Mads Colling at two metres and five centimetres, uh, he's a fairly tall stature of a man anyway. He is a giant of a man, isn't he? Look, compared to the Indonesian players, Mads Conrad is six foot one, 186, and he's pretty much looks a, a short man standing next to his partner. There is Mohamed Hassan, the 27-year-old from Palembang in South Sumatra. Palembang, where the recent Indonesia Grand Prix gold was staged. His partner, Hindra Setiawan, 30 years of age. They are the number two seeds, trying to get through to their first ever final as a pair here in Hong Kong. World ranking of three gone down one place in the Super Series Destination Dubai rankings down to number six having lost first round last week in China but they've been impressive this week as you can see well I had them going to three games against Fu Haifeng and Jiang Nang so I thought they were pushed the full distance in that second round match So to the Danes, both 26 years of age. First appearance as a pair here at the Hong Kong Open. And as you can see, they're not seeded. World ranking up two places to 19 this week. I've spent a total of four weeks in the past at number 16 in the world rankings. So trying to reach their second final of the year. Look at their first round result there against the number three seeds, Hiro Yuki Endo and Kenichi Hawakawa. That really was very impressive indeed. And yesterday's quarter final against the pair that beat them in the final of the European Championships, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozunov. Russian pair taking the first game, but the Danes coming back in the third very strongly indeed. 21-13 that third game. So Sato won uh, Mahadu of Mauritius and Simon L from Hong Kong are court officials. This will be the second meeting between the two. The first time they met that was the first round of this year's Indonesia Premier Super Series. It was a very close opening game as you saw 23-21, 21-11 in the second. I have to say, Morton, what I've really liked about the Danes this week, they had that tremendous 
winning the first round against number three seeds Endo and Hawakawa, and they backed it up. So many times I've seen them have one good match yes. and they don't follow through. Yes, but I think that's a sign of them growing older, more experienced, and I think since the Thomas Cup in May, they have improved a lot. So the former world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, here is to us. Woman, a start. Now as far as Hindra said here, one he's been in three finals here at the Hong Kong Open with former partner Marcus Kido. Won the title twice, 2006 and 2007. Beaten the finalists in 2010. And of course, the Indonesians were semi-finalists last year. Lost out to the eventual champions Lee Young Day and Yu Young Sung who, of course, were beaten in the round of last 16 here this year. Lost out to the German pair of Fuchs and Schuttler, who then lost themselves in the quarterfinals. Yeah, quarter last final. night. Yeah, last match on court it was. Yeah, but what a win. Uh, what a two good weeks it's been for the Germans. First in China, they uh, they beat uh, Carsten Morgensen and, and Matthias Bo, And then this week, they beat the Young Bei and the Young Song. Yeah. You know, <laughs> can't really complain but that's actually going to back to what you said before about being able to back up the good result with another good result yeah so, so far this men's doubles has been men's doubles in a nutshell just around the service situation no rallies at all mm. so, so Five, three. That's Conrad, former European junior champion in men's singles. Yes. 2007. I was coaching him at the time. And he was very upset with me when I said quite bluntly to him that I think he should focus on his doubles. And... Uh, after a little while, he um, he actually decided to, to stop playing in the international or top badminton. Uh, he opted out of the training centre. And eight months oh. later, he came back and said, I think you're right, and then he started playing doubles, and now he's here. Mm. He's a very heavy guy for, for singles. Mm. And he, he was struggling all the way, so that just, you know my advice to him was, you know, focus on your doubles. You play a very good doubles. Singles will be very tough for you. Yeah. I can see that by the build. And and also, he had proven in those same European Junior Championships because these two Danes were actually playing together. In they those were, yeah. And they got the silver medal. They Yeah, they lost uh, they lost out but uh, to Christian and Christian, I think. Christian Larsen and Christian Skogel. Um, but, you know, the he was he was a heavy, you know, he is a heavy built guy. And for singles, it's a little bit too much. Yeah. It took a little while for him to understand it, and he came back, and, mm. you know, all respect to that. And he has proved my point. <coughs> oh, my goodness, I completely missed it. He was too quick. <laughs> Yeah. 
Well, that's going to be one of the big differences between their semi-final today and their quarter-final yesterday against Ivanov and Sozanov because I was making comment, Morton, about the two European pairs and saying getting on the attack was absolutely vital because the defence from both pairs was being broken down a little yes. too easily in comparison to the top Asian players. Yeah, and uh, who better to show us than Setia Wen and Hassan? Yeah. So far, it's been a fine performance for the Danes. Ambitious, Nine, oh. former Olympic champion, Indrasetia one. Between the legs. Yeah. And it was worth the effort because the former world champions, the Indonesians, have the advantage, two point advantage, at the mid game interval. What I was saying, former Olympic champion Marcus with Marcus Kido, of course, mm. Hendra Setia one. I'm just thinking about things and thinking about, is there any tournament that Hendra Setia won, major tournament, that he hasn't won now? He's won the All England, yeah, which he did, of course, with his partner of uh, today. Did that this year, beating Endo and Hawakawa in the final. He's um. now won gold in the Asian Games, gold in Olympics. Uh, world champs. Two world champs. Yeah, two world champs. With two different partners. Yes. What hasn't he won? Yeah, you can always go down to the individual Super Series. I can't really say yeah. whether he's won all 13 or, or not, or all 12 of them. Uh, they won the uh, Super Series finals as well, didn't they? Mm. So yeah, in Kuala Lumpur last year. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you take them from the top, He's definitely got the, the top five or six ones of them. I think I'm going to have to look that up tonight. <laughs> yeah. You know, Morton, you were making comment last week when we were watching the women's singles final and we were talking about Akane Yamaguchi. Yes. Losing in the qualifying of the All England and there she was by the end of the year final of another one of the premier super series events and you said how is it that a player can lose in qualifying of one be in the mm -hmm. final of another and we talked about the inconsistency now i find it extraordinary that this indonesian pair and i'm going to also say that i see it often in men's doubles they lost first round last week the indonesians and yet you know come the big tournaments, the Asian Games, uh, World Championships, so they couldn't defend their title this year because of injury problems, but World Champions last year, Asian Games, All England, is it purely that they are big tournament players or are they, or is, is men's doubles a bit more of a lottery in that the standard is, is so high with so many pairs that it's not unusual to see a good pair lose? I think it's, you know, you explained it so well yourself. I think it's a little bit of all the things you said. Yeah. The competition is really fierce in men's doubles. 
and uh, you really have to be at a very, very high level not or to avoid losing one of the first few rounds in, in, in a tournament or two. Mm. But I wa want to add on to it, say that I don't think that uh, Asan and, and Setia one has played so well lately. I know it's uh, obviously <laughs> doesn't sound good when I say this because they just won the Asian Games. Mm. But I think that uh, the injury to Asan, I think it was uh, him who was injured uh, for the World Championships in August. Yes, he's back. Uh, set them back a bit, mm. I think. Mm. They are not performing to the same standard as before that. And that's where I think some of the inconsistency comes in. You wouldn't see him make mistakes like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's easy for me to sit here and say. But normally, you wouldn't see a mistake like that. And and not only that, it was a big mistake. It was in yeah. the middle, middle of the net. It was not even, not you know, in, uh, at the tape. Close. No. So I don't think Setia uh, Setia one is as sharp as what we've seen him earlier. Mm. And I think our son is getting better. He was uh, the weaker point when we saw them just coming back from injury. Yeah. Well, I suppose it, it was taking time for him to get his confidence back. That's whatever the back injury problem was, you know. Yeah. Because in men's doubles, you don't really hold back that much, do you? <laughs> if you now we just saw a g very yeah. fine example of the, uh, that rally. It's big smashing. Mm. Takes a lot. Desperation defence there from Mads Conrad. <laughs> yeah, he did well. 16, 16. But keeping the Danish combination in this first game, 15-16. Interceptions. <laughs> better today the Danes than yesterday uh, but try to notice that when they uh, when they lift it they give it a lot of height yeah so it's uh, it's more difficult to attack it oh. see that's when trouble mm. starts yeah Sun has definitely been uh, the more decisive of the two Indonesian players in this first game. Yeah, I thought in the World Championship final last year, Mohamed Hassan was the best player on court. Oh, oh. another moment of magic. Game point, 
five game points to be precise, the umpire calling game points. Nicely saved. Well worked so point so by the Danes. 16, 20. And good with the Danish combination is Connor has got to serve. Not that Colling is not serving well, but sometimes he's uh, not too good under pressure. So 21-16, scoreline of the opening game in favour of Muhammad Hassan and Hendra Setiawan. Yeah, 16-15, they just applied the pressure and it really is a trait of champions that they're able to do that. All looks very tight, all looks very close and suddenly they play with the intensity get the points and therefore the opening game 21 16 in 15 minutes Fans here at the Hong Kong Coliseum enjoying semi finals afternoon. Second game, Lobo Flip. Serve. What a nice way to start oh. for the Indonesians here. Perfect flick serve. And as far as I remember, that's actually what Hassan is doing very well. Got a good flick serve, and yeah. he's hardly ever faulted on it. long almost hit the blue carpet <laughs> I don't know if you remember or if you saw these two pairs playing against each other in that first round of the Indonesia Premier Super Series. I certainly remember watching it because the Danes really did fall away quite badly in the second in game. In the second, yes. Yeah. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it's very, very important for the Danes that they keep the score line as close as, as possible. As close, yes. Unless, of course, they're way in the lead. And <laughs> yeah, be happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. But it's it's also it's also about sending the right signals. I think. Yes, you were playing a close first game. 
yes, uh, you know, y you can play with us for, for a little while. But, you know, we apply a little bit more pressure and then we, you know, take it away. Yeah. And, and the Danes have to stop that. Even though when it, you know, it's getting tough, they need to show that they can work under pressure, they can work against all odds and they can really make it and, and not only play when everything is going for them. I don't know if I explain myself correctly. Yeah, no, I understand completely. Is it called adversity? Yeah. yeah. You have to learn to play against that. <laughs> yeah, that's where Ceci Ren is so good. Service over. That's nicely taken. So, so one, five, four. So, it's over. Five, over. New racket required. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe just taking a drink there. I like the way that um, the Danish combination, though they played together when they were juniors, they went their separate ways. And I like the fact that Mads Conrad got the opportunity to play with Jonas Rasmussen. Do you yes, remember that, uh, that helped him a lot. Huge help because yeah. Jonas Rasmussen, former world champion, of course, with Lars Borska. And they got to number 12 in the world ranking. Yes. So Mads Conrad, he's experienced a Super Series final, reached the final of the Malaysian Super Series in 2011. Yeah, but, uh, you know, obviously I have a lot of insight to this Danish combination, you know, being there, seeing them, coaching them, being part of it for, for many, many years. But this is this is actually what is so wonderful to to watch that these two players have come through. I'm not saying they come completely through al already. You know, they still have a lot of improvements to do, but they're up there and they they are close to the top ten in the world and uh, they've done well despite that both of them has been undecided where the badminton actually should be something they wanted to pursue. I just explained about Mass Conrad that he mm. was undecided, but Mass Colling has been even worse. Mm. He's been a he's been a big talent for years and years and years, and the coaches had tried to really make him work, but he he just wasn't interested. And then eventually one day he said, "Okay, I'll play." Mm. And then he's proved himself to get to semi-finals here in the Hong Kong Open oh. and all that. I, th I think that's great. Yeah. They were undefeated in the Thomas Cup as far as I remember in May. Yeah. What is it with you, Danes? Because I remember a similar story about Thomas Label. Yep, Thomas. Tom ga Tom. He gave up badminton. Yes. And then suddenly decided, no, I want to really m uh, try and make it. And he sold his car, moved back home with his parents because he didn't have any money and yes. ended up as world champion, of course, in the yeah. mixed doubles. Yeah, I, I think obviously there's a, a huge importance on, on education, qualifications. And if you don't make it in badminton, you have to make it all the way to the top. You are not earning a lot of money on it. No. And then, you know, in in a society like the Danish, you need to have qualifications to, to survive. So you you need to emphasize and focus on it. Yeah. And that's why a lot of young people are very undecided. Mm. But as a coach, I always advocated that, you know, you have a talent, you're obligated Seven. towards that talent, give it a go. Mm. Spend some years on it. If you don't feel it's worth it eventually, fine, give it up. Take your qualifications, go your normal route, your normal life, and then just do that. But you owe it to yourself at least to try it. 
sounds as if you were somehow present when I was having a word with my parents when I was supposed to be going off to university. Yes. <laughs> and I said, no, yeah. I have to give badminton a go. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah. I'm not saying give it a go for 10 years and end up nowhere. But, you know, give it two or three years and really see if you can move it. Yeah. Oh, this is a marvellous run of points by the Danes. Ten, seven. Five straight points. Oh. That's long, six <laughs> straight points. Eleven, seven. But to get it over Mass no. Colling, you really have to lift it high. <laughs> <laughs> Once Azan did the same, just on the other side, and he was successful doing it. So it's, it's very clever because obviously you don't want to lift to mess Colin. So he's also thinking, oh, they don't want to lift to me. So he's rushing forward. Yeah. And then he's getting caught on occasions like this. And it's cleverly played by by Azan. I really think he was desperately unlucky not to win the last one as well. <laughs> yeah, a wry smile. Yeah. He watched it, looked at the shuttle, looked down at the line, looked down at the line again. Ah, shall oh. I do it? <laughs> yeah, it's <was> clearly. <laughs> Third shot, good interception. But we haven't really been blessed with the very long rallies or very fine rallies as, as such is all about this service situation. Yeah. You know, we can drum it up and do everything, you know, as commentators here. But at the end of the day, it's the serve, the return and the third shot. Yeah. We hardly go further than that in, in, uh, in this match. Well, nine of the last ten points have been won by the Danes. Yeah, that's a good run. Good. Oh, that's out. Just out. So it's over. 15, 10. If we get that in replay, try to look at how the Danes were totally caught by that shot. Mm. I don't want to 
want to jump ahead of myself, Morton, but it looks as if we might be treated to a third and deciding game. Could be. Could be 16 tennis, really. A very good lead for the Danes. It's over. Twenty seventeen. We have the Danish coach, Azua. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> Definitely something he picked up from Jonas Rasmussen. Mm. Same thing, same yeah. trademark. away now from this second game, the Danes. Good defence. Clever. Yeah, well defended by Mas Conrad. The way he uh, first this one, but then this one here. How he got that one as well. Then defending. A good play by City One. Going wide. So game point opportunities for the Danes now to level this semi-final at one game apiece. Yep, first time of asking. 21-15. And it is indeed one game all. Thirty-four minutes for two games. But that's that's just showing the importance of the first three shots. It's yeah. very very short rallies.
Well, all credit to the Danes, because when they were a game and three love down, I think I said on the commentary... <laughs> you did. ...that they really needed to keep <laughs> the court score close because they'd faded away badly the previous time they'd played against Play. the Indonesians. And my goodness, how well they did. All credit to them. Probably not happy with the racket. I didn't see any broken strings there. Did you, Morton? No, no. I just think that a change would do nicely. I think mm -hmm. that's what's going on. Slightly concerned about the body language of the Indonesians. Yeah, I'm mostly concerned about Setia one here. Mm. He is really not playing as well as he can, that's for sure. I've seen him play so much better than than this. Mm. And once again, Mohamed Hassan wants yet another racket. He wants the one with all the winners in. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly off balance, Four. I think, there as he played that. He was, and he opted for these steep half smashes, and obviously, you know, having the height advantage is a good chance, but uh, we quite often see he makes mistakes on it. see you're thinking the same as me. Should the Danish pair go into the final, would they have a chance on the destination to buy or oh. they're too far away? What's the ranking at the moment? The ranking at the moment is 17. I ah. think they're too far and away. Then that's too far away. Oh. Yeah. it out yet but I think the other Danish pair of Bo and Mogensen will almost certainly go down the destination we buy rankings because they haven't played this tournament. Yeah. Two. Plus they lost early in China. Yeah first, first round. round. Ooh. Mm. That's nice. 
But these are the kind of answers that the Indonesians have to find because uh, they're definitely not playing well. And the Danes, are, they keep applying the pressure. You know, the last two or three rallies, the Danes, their defensive play has been broken down a little too easily. Two points, the deficit now. Oh. Yeah, there we are again. And I don't know, is it that Seven, eight. the uh, Indonesians are just more potent with their and penetrating with their attacking play or is it that the Danes have perhaps got a little bit nervous I wondered especially do you remember three rallies ago the defensive shot from Mads Colling yeah, did, uh, did land on the blue carpet I think <laughs> yeah it did it did Let's see, let's see how it goes, but uh, Mass Colling is having a little bit of a history, finding it difficult to cope with the pressure. Um, it comes to his serving, it comes to his defence. But um, so far I think he's been holding up pretty okay, but a 7-2 lead in this third and decisive game was uh, important, and now yeah. it's only 8-9. Yeah. Service over, 8 Nine. Oh, that's well taken by Muhammad Hassan. Time five point advantage has disappeared. It's all level. Oh, that's wide as well. Yeah, suddenly there's a good chance for the Indonesians to go into the mid game interval with a two point lead. Yet another flick serve from the sun proved to be so effective. And suddenly Indonesia is 11-9 up after being 7-2 down in this third and decisive game. Yeah, that is extraordinary statistics. It is. See, here we had a good flick serve. That was the last one. You know, Colling looks to me as if he's letting the shuttle come to him too much yeah, on his gets defensive it, play. It, it gets too close to his body. I totally agree. He's yeah. got to reach out and, and play it earlier. Yeah. So nine of the last 11 points. Yes, goes Indonesia's way. Yeah. Eleven nine, 
left. Service over. Time, 11. Yeah, good rally. Very good rally, but also interested, uh, interesting to see, I think, that the Indonesians like the attack. They get the attack. They work the attack. But they don't go crazy attack. Mm. They, they are very, very controlled in what they're doing and waiting for the right opportunity. It was very patiently played, this attack. Yeah. And I think that will earn them the, the victory in this match. 30, that they are now just prepared to work the attacks, but not really push too hard in order they might make mistakes. Oh, look at that defence. Oh, that's good play. That's yeah. very, very good play. Defensive shot and look at the dive there from Mads Conrad. And that's what you want to see Colling do a lot more as what he did here. Going in, attacking this one. Look at that, how he's moving forward into it. And yeah. that was exactly what you mentioned before. Exactly. Eleven thirty. Come on, dive. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> well played by Setia One. Yeah, huge gap there in the end. We're both going for the same one, the Danes. <laughs> Come on, mess. Conrad, you can dive. <laughs> It's heating up a bit, isn't it? <laughs> ah, that's good. Yeah, super change of pace. <laughs> heating up a bit, as you <laughs> call it. Yes. It's come alive, this <laughs> men's doubles. My goodness me, what a good rally. Definitely the best in the match so far. Good play, both sides. So 12-14. So it's over. 15-12.
Sophie Silva, 13, 15. He shakes his head. He's played so well, hasn't he, in this match? I think he has, but he's very upset with it's such mm. a simple mistake. Yeah. Not onto pressure at all. But he was just too tempted to go too steep. Yeah, and halfway down the net. Once again, good. Hassan and that flick serve. It's very, very good, isn't 17, it? 13. Well, that has earned them three or four points in this third game al yeah. alone. Let's go wide. Service so over. 40, 17. So good at being in the right place at the right time in front of the court. Yeah, but more so that he's not been playing so well today, I think, mm. but when it matters, he played the shot and he's still dared to play it. Yeah. So it's make or break for the Danish pair now. They have to catch up. 19-15 would be uh, too much to catch up. Wasn't the best of serves. No, it wasn't. Yep. Well, it is indeed 19-15. No, is it going to flick again? Yeah, you never know. Been flicking so well. Yep. Oh, string's gone in String. his racket. String's gone. Good play by Conrad. Forward calling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two against one. is fairly desperate, isn't it, when you know that the strings <laughs> have broken. Yeah, suddenly you play two against one. But I think Colling did well to stay in. <laughs> so match point opportunities for Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan. for him so when they serve to the tee there. Yep. Oh, that long reach. Two match points have come and gone. Seventeen, twenty. We're just asking for the court to be mopped. Hmm. 
body language of Muhammad, our son there, looks as if he's tired. <laughs> or maybe just he's having... Leaning against the board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So still match points, of course, for the Indonesians. So they've done it. Well, well, well. Three match points have been saved. Another two remain. Now, can he hold his nerve on his serve? Yeah, it's a good serve. Well done. <laughs> Unbelievable. The fans here are loving it. Nineteen twenty. Yeah, what a comeback that would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Four saved, one to go. Oh, that's a shocker, sir. 21-19. Oh. Eventually. The former world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, come through in three games against uh, Mads Conrad Peterson and Mads Colling. Well, it was a spirited fight right to the end by the Danes, saving those four match point opportunities. <laughs> they did well. They certainly did. But uh, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra said he went Coming through 21 16, 15 21, 21 19 in a match just two minutes shy of the hour mark. Well, he's still leaning against the <laughs> kit box there, isn't he? He is. Mohamed Hassan, I do hope he's all right. They've got a final to play tomorrow, young man. So they've got at least one better than last year. Semi-finalists last year, the Indonesians. And they're through to the final in 2014. So that concludes our semi-finals for this afternoon, which all started with the mixed doubles and the world and Olympic champions Jiang Nang and Zhao Yunlei, two-time former winners of this event, beating last year's champions, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Adcock, in two straight games. Then we had the women's doubles and a repeat of the Asian Games final, uh, but the Japanese pair managing to reverse the result of the Asian Games final. This time they came out on top, the new world number ones, from Japan, as you can see, two straight games. What a women's singles that, to me, was the match of the day. The 2012 World Junior Champion, Okuhara of Japan, beating the current world champion, Marin of Spain. And didn't just beat her. Look at that scoreline. 30, 
nine minutes needed for that victory and she will contest her first ever Super Series tournament final tomorrow. Chen Long, well, he had to work hard in his semi-final against the star from a week ago at the China Open. Shrikanth, well, his run of good form finally came to an end. An hour and three minutes, but he made a real fight of it. Three games, as you can see. And as we've just witnessed in the men's doubles, the former world champions and Asian Games gold medalists, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, safely through to the final in a match just two minutes shy of the hour mark. Well, Morton Frost, thank you for your company today. I will be back tomorrow with all the finals, a little bit later than today, 1.30 local time, 5.30 GMT. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.